Good morning, cousins. Owen the Canadian Redneck here. Welcome to uh, what is still a work in progress of trying to sell the condo in Montreal, uh, packing to move for when it does eventually sell. And if you hear noise, that's the neighbors outside having a, oh my God, it's spring and we're not freezing our butts off outside if we stay out for more than two seconds. Um, not feeling well today. I've had a migraine since last night and was woke up very, very queasy, uh, which really sucks because today is the day that all my friends and everybody are getting together to go sugaring off, which if you're not Canadian, that means they're going to a place where they make maple syrup. They serve you this fantastic meal of eggs, bacon, and everything's drowning in maple syrup, and you can eat thickened maple syrup off of snow, which is really good, and there's a tradition, like, always take that first little piece, and I'll just have a little one, and it's so good, you go and you get the bigger piece after, and then you just get, well, I'm already sick, so I don't have to worry about getting sick off of that, but I wasn't exactly about to go and spend money on a meal that I wasn't going to enjoy, uh, even though I would have really enjoyed the company of my friends, so I'm thinking, I'm ill. What can I do? I have I have been really slacking on the vlogs. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't really been doing any at all. Uh, so I'm going back to what I thought was really fantastic was the Q&A by Ali the Bruce. Uh, again, the link will be in the doohickey below if you want to do the questions yourself because they're really fun. So I'm going to be doing questions 70 to 79, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so here we go. Question 70. How many hats do you own? I've actually got a fair few. Most of them are baseball caps. Uh, some of my favorites are camouflage caps, but uh, thanks to me at work, they're actually allowed to wear baseball caps because I'm allergic to sunlight, so I you know, obviously have a, quite a few hats because of that. But they didn't really have baseball caps for security agents where I was until I went in wearing uh, the company hat because I would get sick if my head wasn't covered. Uh, so the school where I work at went, why is he wearing a hat from their security company? Why aren't they wearing one of ours? So the security group actually did get several hats from the, un uh, from the school, the university where I'm working, and give them to the security agents, which I had a few people were very happy about that. But they never said thank you for me being allergic to sunlight. Uh, question 70. Uh, are you good at pool? I won a stepmother out of a game of pool. Uh, we were playing with uh, a, a woman my dad was on a, a date with. It's my biological father, dad. Uh, and we played, and we're at the end of the game where she would have scratched because the the she sunk the eight ball but the white uh, cue ball was about to go in and you know being younger I I, you know, I stopped it from going in and it was declared that I was the winner because if I hadn't stopped the ball she would have scratched and whatever uh, flash forward uh, several months after that and my dad married this woman and well that was uh, a fine how do you do and uh, she seemed really nice but in the end uh didn't work out so well and you know eventually ended up you know my first summer job she ended up taking all the money that she was supposed to be putting in a bank account for me and she basically after the doors you found out that she had kept everything for herself and there goes my money for my kayak yes is that redneck enough for you my stepmama stole my kayak money so uh ever since then had a bit of a mental block where playing pool is concerned. So, not not a big pool player. Okay, uh, 72. What's the highest you've ever jumped into the water from? <laughs> uh, we went to a place here in, uh, in, in Quebec, uh, in the northern part of it, uh, that a friend of ours, so there was like rapids and all kinds of stuff, but then there's this one boulder which had to be probably 30 to 40 feet okay, maybe 25, 28 feet above the water. And I finally got the guts to jump off the first time into the water. And it was so much fun. I think I actually jumped twice. But yeah, it, it, it's not an adrenaline junkie. Just saying. I love water and it was fun and everything. But 
I mean, without my glasses, I can't see. So basically, I'm jumping off a very high place into water, blind. So I would do it again, though. I would go back there, and I would do it again. Just don't know where that place was. Have you ever been admitted to a hospital? Is there a hospital that I have not been admitted to? I've been admitted for uh, appendix. I've been admitted for deviated septum, uh, migraines. I've been admitted for a broken kneecap where I broke my kneecap in ha uh, into two perfect pieces. So it took them a couple days to say, oh, on the x-ray, yeah, it's broken. Come in for a cast. 30 pounds in August during a heat wave, 30 pounds of plaster. Yeehaw. Yeah, sorry about that. They uh, had a pop-up from my Firefox. I update now. And then I got hot and took my, my jacket thing off. We were playing like, what's different in this picture? Uh, like I was saying, uh, hospital-wise, a uh, little bit of, you know, TMI. As you all know, I'm F to M transhuman. Uh, my preferred term. Some people might not like it, but I am one, so I can say whatever I want. Uh I've had, uh, let's see, I've had a double mastectomy. I've had uh, a complete hysterectomy. I have no other surgeries besides that. I was to the point where I want to be comfortable with my body, and, you know, that's where I'm comfortable. Uh, because they, there was a thing where I did have um, some weird uh, pain in my stomach, and they said, well, you know, just to avoid like a, a cancerous or an atrophy situation that needs to come out. And back in the day, and I think it's still the case in Quebec and I believe in Canada, if you want to be officially transitioned and to get your papers and to have your identity approved of, you basically have to volunteer to be completely sterilized so that you don't reproduce and, you know, like flip-flop or, or like change your mind or something. So you basically have to give up, um, you know, uh, the ability to procreate in either female to male or male to female to be considered to have your official papers and documents. Because if you don't have your check mark of operations done, you're not, you're not uh, committed you know, to, to this, this whole change operation and what you do with your body. You have to have the, the double mastectomy, you have to have recreative surgeries, and you have to have removed all your, or you know, like reproductive organs to, you know. Um, thankfully, I never had to have the recreative surgeries because, quite frankly, the success rate with female to males of that surgery and the, the, the Frankenstein look of any additional um, appendages, uh, no thank you. I mean, I don't even date who's going to find out what I, you know, just, well, obviously you now, but not interested. Uh, really, maybe later, no, not even maybe later, just no. But like I said, lots and lots of hospitals and private clinics and, you know, even... Have you ever had any brushes with the law? Is question 74. Well, uh, like I said, I had a, a, a court date. Uh, not because I did something wrong with the law, but because I caught somebody on camera doing something wrong and was able to provide uh, the proof and I had to go in to testify and if you look at back in my previous q and A's, like I think it's part two or is it part one where I explain I went into city uh, hall or the, the hall of justice you know with super friends uh, looking like one of Capone's wise guys so yes I've had brushes with the law but on a positive note uh, 75 have you ever been on TV my stepfather is one of was one of the most foremost media personalities uh, in Montreal and Quebec uh, from basically the '60s up until he passed away. He had a, a you know over fifty something years of career, so through him I've been on TV. But the last time I was on TV was during a Montreal Comic Con. Uh, I was standing over a hole that was big enough to take a child's leg off, waiting for the security personnel to bring something to cover it. Um, 
wearing a Where's Waldo costume while a news crew was interviewing a guy dressed in a halo armor suit. So in the background, if you ever find that clip, you'll see Where's Waldo, my chosen costume, uh, just standing there like a safety cone waiting for someone to fix a hole before it could hurt somebody. So, yes, I have been on TV for good reasons. Uh, have you ever met any celebrities? This is question 76. I got to meet Dolph Lundgren. Uh, he was in a uh, rock quarry filming Silent Trigger in uh, Varennes, Quebec. Uh, and I had found out that he was in Montreal. And my my stepdad uh, had you know knows how much I admire. Yeah, I had the biggest crush on him, and so he actually found out where Mr. Lundgren was filming, and drove me. I believe it was probably like an hour and a half drive to get there, and he drove me out to there, and we. Um, got to where they were filming and they said, oh, well, they all went to lunch, but if you go up the, the road, that's where they're having lunch. So I got out of the car with my little autograph book and, you know, well, it was a notebook because I'd never had autographs from anybody else before. I went up to the, the place and the door was incredibly hard to open. And so I thought, well, you know, it was so hard to open that it's going to, you know, I let it close behind me. The thing slammed shut louder than what you'd imagine a prison door shutting behind you. And I tensed up. I'm like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. And I looked around and I like, I didn't see anybody. And then I saw Mr. Lundgren in line for lunch. And he wasn't looking at me. So I went, oh. And then I heard somebody kind of giggle off to the side, but I didn't care because it wasn't Mr. Lundgren laughing at me. And in my most polite Canadian I went up to him and I said, excuse me, please, sir. I'm, I'm sorry, but may I have your autograph, please? Yes, that's how Canadian I am. I'm very, very polite. Uh, and he went, sure, no problem. And he signed it. And I didn't look at his face or anything. I couldn't even look up at him. And he is tall, very, very tall. Uh, he signed my, my autograph and I said, thank you very much, sir. I turned, not even looking at him. I watched his hand the whole time while he was signing. Huge hands, huge. Um turned and walked out as it, after saying thank you back to the car on autopilot and my mom and dad were there and I walked out and so my mom goes well did you get it and I looked at her and I held up my book with his signature on it and then my legs turned to jello and I was able to pour myself into the back seat going oh my god I just saw Dolph Lundgren and I got his autograph my mom and dad started laughing. They thought it was the funniest thing. I was having my little fangirl moment. Uh, and then my dad said, let's go for China. Here's a Chinese restaurant. We're going for Chinese food. So I got to meet Dolph Lundgren and have Chinese food on the same day. Woohoo, score. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was the, um, the first celebrity I met. But then I did um, some uh, movie uh, extra work. And I got to meet Margot Kidder. I met Andy McDowell. I met Michael Ironsides. I was in the first, uh, final, ch uh, last chapter. Uh, I also uh, worked Nev Campbell in a Lost Junction production. I was in that film. So I got to meet several other people. But Dolph Lundgren is the best experience I ever had meeting another actor. Although Andy McDowell, when I was sitting down doing my role, in between takes, she turned and looked at me and said, those are nice shoes. And I was like, yeah, my mom got them for me. So this was like, okay, all of this happened pre-transition, but it's still pretty darn cool. Uh, have you ever been to Legoland? They have land? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Uh, it's probably in the States somewhere, isn't it? Uh, haven't been there. Have you ever done something heroic for question 78? So bear with me. We're almost done here. Uh, I stopped the bad guys. I've helped with medicals at work. Uh, I heroic. Not yet, but I have contingency plans. I always dream like, okay, if this situation happened, what would I do? And so I'm, I'm, I'm always poised, hopefully, to be heroic and not hurt myself at the same time because you can't be a hero if you're putting yourself... I mean, 
yes, okay, maybe that's what people think is heroic, but I mean, sometimes there are quiet heroes that maybe you help somebody with their homework, or maybe you, you know, uh, gave groceries uh, to someone, and all this pay it forward stuff where people are videotaping themselves. I have done things that have helped people, but I'm not going to videotape them, and I'm not going to really say what I've done to help and to do things because I kind of like the secret hero aspect. And if, you know, the only superheroish thing is that I can come up with to maybe hear, I do have some spandex outfits, and one of them is Aquaman. That's the extent of my being a hero. All right, last one, number 79. Have you ever played a practical joke on anyone? Of course you have. Everybody has. I have. And, you, you know, uh, I, uh, one of my ones that sticks out when we were little. No, this one was actually really funny. Um, when we were little, my sister and I shared a room. We got into this really funky uh, Avon smelling like um, chapstick and we put it on our faces and then we put powder over it so it made us look like we had boils on our skin and we kind of zombified ourselves. And I draped myself over uh, the, the dresser and my sister was hanging off her bed and we were all in like weird dead poses and we had lit like lights but not the main light and we yell out mom mom come here and so she you know and we quickly like you know playing dead opened the door and she, not really seeing my sister and I she saw the powder that we had used and and the stuff we had left out and was not impressed with our attempts at you know a practical joke on her so we basically had to like clean our rooms and not waste things again so anyways this is the end of that was my remote uh this is the end of the questions and answers uh, number four thank you for bearing with me and until next time stay alive <laughs>